Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the second and also the last day of the 7th International E-Learning Conference 2016. Uh, in the morning sessions, we have uh, four uh, presentations uh, which are very interesting. And uh, I would like to start by uh, introducing the first keynote speaker for today's in the morning session. He is the director and the professor and also chair of the Department of Education, School of Education, Seoul National University. He is currently the Director of Education Research Institute and uh, Chair of the Department of Education. He worked as the Director of Center for Teaching and uh, Learning and also Associate Dean of Education Affairs of NSU. His research subjects include instructional Strat uh, systems design model, e-learning design, instructional design strategies for creativity, self-regulated learning, and uh, flipped learning models. He served as the Vice President of the Korean Society for Educational Technology and President of the Korean Society for Learning and Performance. Distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Professor Chiolin Lim. <clears throat> okay, good morning. Good morning. Uh, it's my honor to be invited as a speaker in this wonderful conference. And uh, my major area is educational technology, as he said. And uh, I have some experiences in designing and implementing e-learning courses. And I had a chance to work as a uh, director of Center for Teaching and Learning in Seoul National University last 2012 and 2014. So I'd like to share what I have learned from those experiences with you about uh, the, the Korean MOOC and also in the context of Seoul House, the Seoul National University, working on the uh, online course development in this uh, session. As you already know, uh, about two, two 20, 2012, the uh, MOOCs like uh, Coursera and edX, different types of MOOCs <coughs> has been evolving and then and, and implementing throughout the world. And uh, Korean MOOC uh, just started last year, 2000. And the topic I'd like to talk about is that MOOCs is for a kind of open education to, to anybody who wants to learn. But what about the traditional universities like Seoul National University and uh, Chualangkorn Universities do with MOOCs? What are the directions and what are the environment that the traditional universities like SNU and Chualangkorn University do with MOOCs? That's the, one of the points I'd, I'd like to make in this uh, presentation. So briefly, I will talk about the KMOOC in the context of the uh, online course development, what are the status and development, and then what the Seoul National University particularly play a role in the course of developing MOOC. Uh, I can say this kind of leadership. And then I'd like to share the, the specific strategies that we use in Seoul National University to develop and implement online courses in SNU. And what are the issues and challenges we uh, noticed and how we overcome those uh, challenges as we go to the next phase of KMOOC for higher education? And what are the future directions of higher education with MOOCs? That's the point I'd like to make. The MOOC. Uh, first of all, let me show the, what I saved a little bit of the Korea MOOC. Could please play. So basically, this is the first page of Korean MOOC, and the students just typing the course they, they would like to watch. And they can see some kind of courses. And then they go to the uh, content introduction. This is a page of content introduction. It is about the creativity in the uh, engineering courses. And this is one of the popular courses in Korea. So basically, same edX platform, and the student choose a uh, content, and then it shows the uh, professor's lectures. Uh, 
just a, a short glimpse of the, what has been doing in Korean mode. Just basically follow the edX platform, which is very efficient for us. And the starting point. 아, 여러분들은 창의성이 무엇이라고 생각을 하십니까? It's a little bit awkward, but anyway, it's good. 창의성에 대한 여러 학자들의 정의를 보면 창의적인 인물이다 하고 저 보는 데 있어서 대부분의 사람들이 분명해요. 그러면 we prefer to have the uh, studio type of, of, of video lectures, which is more, uh, ample, uh, more uh, focusing on the lecture and content itself. So this is one particular uh, example of the online courses in KMOOC, I mean. Okay. So uh, this is one example, and this is some courses that, that Korea developed in uh, last year, two, 2015, and then <clears throat> basically the Korean MOOC is uh, developed by the initiative of Korean government. So the Korean government offered some fund, and about 10 universities participated in the last year, and we quickly made courses and then implemented in the last year about 27 courses in a very rapid mode. One of the famous character of Korea is speed, and so we developed and then implemented the courses, 27 courses, Korea MOOC uh, last year. And just a, a, a short experience to you, there are seven uh, top uh, courses from uh, the uh, foundations of economics to the university and life. Guess. Number one, and about the 20, more than 20 courses, number one and number seven, these courses are made by Seoul National University, and the other ones are from private universities, and the registrants is about 6,000, like 27, 2,700. Those are most of, of the Korean students, some students from outside of Korea, but at this point, it is not for international level, even though we have English subtitles, most of the uh, registrants are coming from Korea, inside Korea. So this is the, a number that you can guess when you open your Thai, Thai MOOC to your students. Maybe those are numbers that you can expect from your Thai student. So just show some <clears throat> ideas. So economics and then about creativity in the engineering department and analytics of Confucius. It is one of the popular area these days in Korea. And artificial intelligence, and the movie storytelling, and the theory of relativity about I mean, for, the, for the public. So those are the seven popular courses that we offered through the KMO last year. And this year, 2016, we enlarged the, uh, the courses for KMO. Basically, the, the, there are 10 existing institutes, institutions like Seoul National University and other Yonsei and Korea University, a top private universities. We include more, more universities to this KMO, and they, they uh, are selected through the screening process so that a quality courses should be developed in, the, in 2016. So, uh, and also, one of the uh, key a key uh, peculiar thing is that the Korea government is trying to have different types of project for quality higher education. So that, for instance, uh, like ACE or the CK is the project name that to push the Korean university to have high quality education, especially for undergraduate level. And those projects that the university should develop some MOOC courses as a an, as an contract so that not just the, 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 the universities, these universities, but other different types of universities should develop MOOC courses so that we can provide more divergent types of MOOC courses for the future. So the participating institution is, is getting large these days. Okay, and another picture of what is going on in the, in the Korean MOOC. Uh, in, in 2016, we have this, this type of, of picture. Uh, <clears throat> first of all, the courses that we developed in 2016 is about 
the existing universities has have up to like uh, 30 courses, and then new universities involved in this year have like 20, more than 20 courses. And as I told before, the government-funded project uh, universities also develop courses about 25. So through this uh, approach, we have like 100 courses up to this year, and the popular areas social science and humanities and engineering. And obviously, engineering, this the green one, has the popular area because that is more demanding area for university students. It is a little bit complex and difficult, so that the student wants to get more knowledge from the online courses of the engineering departments. So this is a, a glimpse of what has been going on in terms of course development in 2016. <clears throat> and this is a general map, map that the uh, Korean MOOC Government Institute provide for us. Basically, the step one is up to next year for introduction and settlement. And step two is from 2018 about globalization. And also step three about the uh, open higher education system settlement. These are three roadmaps that we have at this point. For instance, as I said before, last year we have 27 courses about, and then this year we have around 100 courses in KMOOC for content diversification. And also next year we would like to have more content standardization to be more effective. And then also from 2018 we would like to have content internationalization so that many students outside of Korea may uh, enjoy the Korean MOOC for their learning. This is a roadmap that we have at this point. <coughs> And basically, just I show, I show you the, what has been going on in terms of Korea MOOC, KMOOC. But at this point, I would like to share with you what has been doing in Seoul National University, like a traditional universities, for this kind of direction. I would say uh, leadership in, in KMOOC, because Seoul National University, as, as, as a national university, has an obligation to, to provide their courses to public and then also some obligation for a higher education reputation. So let me share what has been going on in terms of the Seoul National University uh, online content development and the MOOC involvement. This is the university that I work for. Uh, basically, uh, it is a huge campus university, and then it has the student of like 26,000 students as a whole, and then 16,000 for undergrad level, and then 10,000 students for grad level. So it is basically research-oriented uh, university. That it means that sometimes the professors are very reluctant to, to increase their time and effort to, to teaching, especially for undergrad level. But from 2011 and 12, we shifted a little bit to focus on the undergrad level teaching on education quality. So uh, let me try to ex explain what has been going on in terms of the quality education effort in Seoul National University. <clears throat> As I said before, in, two, uh, 20, in 2012, we started to develop online courses for students and the public. It is very important year. I uh, became the director of Center for Teaching and Learning in 2012. And at the time, one of the key, key accident or a key, key uh, factor is that the alumni, the alumni of Seoul National University was emphasizing Seoul National University should play uh, a role of service to public rather than just students itself inside the campus. And the other one is Seoul National University should play as a uh, worldwide, international level uh, university rather than just inside Korea. So they, they gave some money, huge money, and then they asked us to develop online courses for students and then for the public. They, at the time, expecting some kind of MOOCs, even, especially the, you know, the open courseware from MIT. So the open courseware MIT encouraged the alumni of Seoul National University invest some money for online course development rather than just classroom activities only. So that is the area that Seoul National University is shifting from the traditional university type of classroom activities to online course development and, uh, and then prepare 
the MOOCs type of new uh, stimulus outside world. Obviously, in, in 2013, the edX was approaching to us, Ole University, and uh, asked us how about joining the edX to have the uh, MOOCs courses. And uh, the, the administrative level, think about, and then actually the Coursera, another uh, uh, MOOCs institute, also approached us. So we have to think about what, what edX or the Coursera will be good for us, and we finally decide edX is the, uh, the good partner for our Seoul National University in terms of reputation. So we decided to join edX 12, 2013. And then we started to provide <coughs> SNUX, which is the uh, brand name of edX in Seoul National University, SNUX. We developed uh, the SNU courses 2014. And one thing I would like to make emphasize is that we actually did not make uh, content for edX only. We actually made already online content with the help of alumni, as I before, and we we uh, edited a little bit to uh, to to make the obligations about the edX edX regulation. So it is very a little bit efficient to switch from the Seoul National University online content to edX content. So we did it very quickly. As I said before, it's one of the, our reputation in Korea. Rapidly and quickly to follow what, what is taking in the world. And then, obviously, we uh, played a, a kind of example what should do the traditional university to develop online courses, even the MOOC environment. And uh, last year, 10, 2015, we involved in or participate in KMOOC as, as a major contributor because we have some experiences in online content development and also involvement in, in the edX. So we provided our experience to the government and other universities so that we can slowly, we can naturally move to the edX environment. So we played a key role in the uh, Korean MOOC uh, development, I can say. And then this year, we we do again our effort to develop more courses, KMO courses, with the other universities, private universities too. So this is a kind of a history that how Seoul National University is involved in. That this is, as I said before, we, the Seoul National University, about four or five years, 2012, start to develop online courses, which, which is called SNU ON, SNU ON, for our students and also for the public, I mean, the Korean citizen and, and people. And these are the websites that we developed for our students. And then about uh, up to 2015, last year, we developed 75 courses. For one course, we, we spent money like, uh, gave money like, uh, uh, $15,000 per professor, each development. So the alumni funded us, so we developed 75 courses from the alumni support. And then, <clears throat> and then this year, the, the, the spring semester, we again developed 11 courses from the uh, support of the alumni. So, uh, we have like uh, more than like 50, 90 courses at this point. These are some uh, numbers that I can show you. Like for instance, in the Sunon courses, we have like uh, the economics class and chemistry and the basic physics. Those are the numbers of the students that actually registered for the Sunon courses. These are not, uh, some of the students are taking credit for those courses but some of the students are not taking the credit just for, for their academic excellence. They just chose these courses. But let me just show the numbers that students registered for these, these kind of courses, about 302, 200 more than students for each course. These are the numbers that we have right now. And also, as I said before, it is for public also. So we took the strategy of, of using appli application rather than using the PCs. So the, so the every, every student 
or the public, even you, can download the sooner on and then watch the the Seoul National Universe professor's lecture. Sometimes some of them are English, so you can enjoy some of them, but most of them are still in Korean. But these are the applications that we use for our students and the public. And then, as I said before, we have some agree agreement between edX and SNU, SNU in 2013. And then we developed uh, the, the courses, SNUX courses, and then implemented it in 2014. About uh, four SNU on SNUX courses. And that these are the another numbers that I would like to show you. Like for instance, one of the popular courses is that robot me mechanism and control. And the professor actually did like with English, so it is very popular not within the uh, Korea but throughout the world. Anyway, the most of students come from not just within Korea but India and China and even America. So those students are. Uh, we're getting the, course, the, the content from the Dr. Park from about this uh, robot mechanics and control. And we divided it two because one of the regulations that edX suggests us is that rather than 15 week courses like a traditional university, you have to cut it down to seven or eight weeks for the students can go through all the assignment and, and work rather than just dropping out. So we divided it into two parts and then it, it went successfully. And this one, international politics about Korean Peninsula also has the 6,000 audience or students. And interesting enough, the physics course also has 17,000 students. This course done by Korean, but you, we have English subtitles so that every student around the world can access to this course about the physics. So it is okay. one of the popular courses that we developed and offered for international level. And then KMOOC. Uh, KMOOC is sponsored by the Ministry of Education. It's a kind of a lead project. It started from last year, 2015. And we, we developed actually two courses for KMOOC. These courses about economics and then university and life, uh, those professors are very, very popular and energetic in terms of teaching. So uh, he, they were selected economics and then and, and universe the natural science, and then it was a good, uh, you know, they are a very good uh, content for our audiences in Korea. And let me show another, okay, once again, for your review, the, uh, the, the, the course that we developed, the, the uh, economics. Could you, can you press the play button? Okay, so as I said before, the, pre the student just typing like economics, they want to uh, share. And then this is the menu that you just saw before. So uh, students can watch the uh, introduction of the courses. And then <clears throat> this is the, uh, the, the site that the student can watch the uh, introduction. And some note, note, notice by the uh, professor what is going on in the, in the course outline. And then this is the, one of the typical uh, screenshots. The student can select the course, the content, and then they can watch the video clips, like these video clips and some uh, testing. And English title over here. So this is done by Korean in the Seoul National Universe Studio. So we developed and we gave this content to uh, Korean MOOC, and they uh, operate in the Korean MOOC platform. This is a typical example of the Korean MOOC. And this is one of the number one popular courses in Korean MOOC about economics. Very obviously, students in the, in the campus and outside the campus are very interested in the economics, how we understand economy, the difficulties. So uh, this is one of the popular courses in KMU last year. OK. So up to now, I tried to explain what has been going on in, 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 in uh, KMOOC, and then what are the uh, history of Seoul National University involvement in online content development 
how we use those uh, content or the experience to came of development. But the point I'd like to make is that how we use the MOOCs we develop or the online content in Seoul National University, I mean in the traditional university, in the campus-wide, how, what we should do for our students. And one of the obvious answer at this point, not just Seoul National University, but many of the university in Korea who which were involved in the uh, KMOOC is not just beyond open education for public, but quality education for campus students. In other words, I saw some interesting uh, uh, workshop. I mean, the invited speaker yesterday with your uh, Thailand professor. Students sometimes do not show a high, le high level of the concentration when they have some lectures from the professor. They just play around at the backside. Same happens in Korea. The professor tried to lecture very uh, actively, but still, many students, even in SNU, play around in the backside of the classroom. And uh, there must be some change. So uh, we, we would like to have more student environment engagement rather than just lecturing. So that could be one of the direction of the quality education in campus uh, student. So obviously, the flipped learning is the key uh, strategies that uh, we would like to, even not just Seoul National University, and many universities at this point are devoting their efforts how we have flipped learning, use the, the uh, uh, online content, including MOOCs, so for engagement, and sometimes for even effectiveness. Like uh, some middle-level uh, universities in the suburban area or regional area, we need, have, we need to have more effectiveness for students' learning. So not just engagement for effectiveness, they can watch the videos before they come to the class, and then they have different type of activities. That is one very interesting and energetic effort that we have nowadays in Korea. So that is one direction I would like to emphasize with you. When you launch your Thai MOOC, rather than just open to public, you have to think about how we can use the MOOCs for campus students. Flipped learning is just one strategy on the model. You can, you can think about more models or strategies, how we can use MOOCs in the campus-wide student. Actually, in 2013, even before we joined the edX or our MOOCs, we have to think about a flipped learning for our students for, as I said, engagement. In terms of effectiveness in Seoul National University, it doesn't work. The students are highly motivated and highly well-prepared well students. But in terms of engagement, it is a little bit low. So uh, uh, the, we, we, we used the experimental approach about flipped learning 2013. And this is one of the example uh, courses in the uh, mathematics and exercise course in 2013, fall semester. And the students are working together to solve a problem with the uh, iPad, and then students, before they come to the class, they watch the professor's uh, video clip. So these are the clips that the students watch, and uh, these are the, some activities that students do in the classroom. So based on this experience, we try to diffuse this idea to other faculty members. And this is the uh, glimpse of the number, another number of Seoul National University about current flipped learning. We have this spring semester about 22 courses about this social science and natural science. These are the uh, courses that, uh, that we used for flipped learning. That means these, are, these, these courses are actually already developed by online format. So the professor can use these online content. And even I developed my own content and then use the flipped learning <coughs> for, uh, for, uh, for my course. Actually, ne next semester, fourth semester, my courses will be included. But this is just for spring semester for your information. So uh, this, these are the status. Even though it is a starting point, we would like to emphasize to use this type of flipped learning to many professors who 
show interest in student engagement. So, based on the experiences of, of uh, Seoul National University uh, online content development and another strategy for flipped learning, what are the strategies for online course development in SNU? First of all, I'd like to emphasize the partnership and communication. Okay? The SNU is trying to have uh, two uh, or three, actually, the partners or the uh, communication stakeholder. One is basically government. We try to have a good relationship with government. Uh, there are many projects government wants us to do, so we use this kind of uh, government <coughs> project. And also, we have a good relationships companies like Samsung or the non-profit organization like edX. Also, we have a good support from alumni association. So those three partners or stakeholders work together to have a good Seoul National University online content. And about in infrastructure, let me try to emphasize the, uh, the CTL, Center for Teaching and Learning. I worked for as a director of Center for Teaching and Learning, and it is very critical to have a clear and concise mission of Center for Teaching and Learning to have more online content and have efficient, uh, effective teaching strategy for professors. And also, we need to have college involvement. We have different colleges in our university, and there are several Center for Teaching and Learning in each college. So we need to have a good collaboration. And also, we have a high-speed and wireless internet, as you already imagined. We have a good facility, and these are the key role for online content development in terms of infrastructure. Okay. I have no idea why it doesn't go. Okay. And then also as I this is a picture that I would like to emphasize. The reason I show you is that this center for teaching and, and learning is located at the center of the university. That it, it symbolizes the way we do. So this is a, a picture of Center for teaching and learning. It is located in the center of the uh, university. And then we have a good uh, LMS, it, which is called the Moodle-based LMS ETL. It uses a lot. And then all, also we have the Sunon, uh, as I said before, lecture video system. So we have different types of hardware and softwares. And then this is the LMS that we use, Moodle-based online support system for, for blended learning. So, based on the strategies I just showed, what are the issues and challenges? First of all, uh, uh, let me just briefly four areas of uh, uh, development and student participation, scaling issue, and technical support. About development issue, what course should be developed first for MOOC? Actually, there might, there might be some different criteria. For instance, popularity, or for instance, the uh, each universe have different uh, unique aspect. Those criteria should be decided first before you can start. And then also, how we can use MOOCs for flipped learning. As I said before, there must be some ways to use flipped learning. So, oops, it doesn't, okay. Okay, and one of the reasons why I said is that even though we did use the flipped learning approach, one of the comments by the, under, by the great student is that because there was a mini lecture in class, I didn't need to watch a video lecture. That means there must be some strategies. The professor emphasized watching the video before coming to the class and then give some quizzes rather than just starting the mini lecture. So there must be some delicate strategies that more effective use of flipped learning should be. And then also student participation. In the flipped learning phase, in the flipped learning phase, the uh, students have a huge overload, so we need to have to be very careful what kind of assignment and load should be done to the students. Time is already up, so let me just quickly, uh, briefly show. Uh, and the, the scaling issue is MOOC or flipped learning useful and easy to implement. So we need to have to think about the way to actually uh, to how we develop and how we use it in the flipped learning situation. So, for instance, domain-specific MOOCs should be developed. 
rather than a um, unique content, it should, you, you, we have to have more diverse content of the moved. And then also we need to have a more technical support. Let me just quickly do the final comment or the final direction is that uh, one of the points I would like to make is that the MOOC should be used for in, t in terms of flipped learning so that we need to have more seamless learning between online and face-to-face -face activities. And the learning analytics and dashboard is one of the key directions we have to focus. And then also how we have the uh, student participation, especially not just a subject matter like physics, we need to focus on the self-regulated learning skills and collaboration skills through this MOOC and flipped learning approach. That is another direction I would like to emphasize. And uh, also the classroom culture change is the another directions that we would like to later focus on. Okay, and then also we need to have professional development rather than just you do this one, we need to have provide more sophisticated uh, support system to them. And then also another issue is, as, a, as you heard about the OER yesterday, we need to have not just developing the content, but we need to, use, we need to have strategy to use the existing courses for the future development. And also technical, and administrative support is very needed. And, and I would like to emphasize what is called institutional, institutional research. That means we need to collect the data about this type of approach and then analyze and then provide some directions in the future. OK, so uh, finally, it, it doesn't work well. So the point I would like to make from this presentation is MOOCs is for uh, Originally, uh, often education for all. Yeah, I agree with the, this idea. It's a very fantastic idea. But still, we need to have improvement of education quality in the campus-wide so that MOOCs is used for our students like uh, the uh, flipped learning strategies. That's what I would like to emphasize. OK, thank you very much. Uh, actually, we still have uh, a few minutes for any questions uh, since uh, Professor Lim uh, finished his presentation uh, a few minutes earlier. He tries to keep the time. Uh, any questions? Oh. So we provided the microphone for you to ask uh, if you have. Yes, please. Can you proceed to the microphone? Thank you. Um, Somebody just yeah. saying to Good me, morning. time is up, so I, I, I have to hurry. But anyway, okay. Thank you uh -huh. uh, for the nice presentation. Um, this is Christine from Chilong Kong Business School. Okay. We are developing the online courses, and I'm not sure whether do we have the revenue model for the online course or not. I mean, do you open it for free, or do you collect any money ah. or certificate for that? No, at this point, we do not collect any money. We are the national university, and we have to work as a a public law, so it's free at this point. But who knows? In the KMOOC, they have different strategies. For, so we find we involved in KMOOC, they have different strategies for for maintenance. So, uh, but in our university level, it's free, no money charge. Thank you. And the okay. second question is: uh -huh. In KMOOCs, there are a lot of universities participating, right? And do you have any conflicts with, among universities, like economics courses from SNU and you know other and Sogang University? Definitely. Um, what I understand that there is a selection process. Every university is apply for their courses, but in the selection committee, they decide based on the quality of the, their proposal. They select in, in a balanced way, so that rather than just focusing on economics, we do have different types of content. So basically, the screening process works for you. Look for them. I mean. Thank you very much. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any more questions? Okay, thank you very much.